Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason Pizzino. What we're gonna to cover today is Ethereum hitting its new all-time high. What do we expect to see from here and what does it mean to us? Also, I wanna go through the bell curve adoption and why this might be the biggest bull market that we see in cryptocurrency. So stick around for that throughout the video and we'll get into some technical analysis and fundamentals from here. Just before we move on, as always, warning. Scammers are in the comments. Do not post anything to the scammers in there. I won't send you my WhatsApp, my Telegram, my email address in the comments section. All of the official links are in the description. If you're new to the channel and you find some value from the content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon as some of this is time sensitive information. YouTube also has a way of shadow banning cryptocurrency content at the most critical times throughout the market cycle. As well, if you find some value from it, be sure to hit the like button. It goes a long way to helping out the video and the channel in the YouTube algorithm, as well as watching the video throughout. Now, let me know what your most enjoyable part is of the video and I'll continue to improve on that message throughout further videos. The charting software that I'm using is TradingView. There is a link to that in the description, which you guys can use. Follow me on Instagram if you wanna see my cryptocurrency retirement fund update. Today it's currently valued at 170,000 Aussie dollars. I started last year with 26,000 Aussie dollars. Remember you're at your home of nopium, hopium free content. And just before we jump into the agenda, a reminder, my course is coming out this month. So if you want to be a part of the first 100 people who get a mega discount, be sure to see my website in the description, leave your email address there and you guys will be on the list to get in first with the first 100 guys to get that discount. So moving on to our agenda. And of course, this is our Nopium agenda, our Hopium free YouTube cryptocurrency content. We do love the Hopium, but right now we are going through the Nopium. Number one, fundamentals, the bell curve adoption theory. Why well, I think this is gonna be the biggest bull market that we see. We do know that it could be diminishing returns, but the bell curve adoption theory is just another theory to add to our ever growing list of how we can see the markets. Number two, forecast and trading psychology. This is the biggest one. What happens next? Number three, technical analysis, price levels to watch, hopium equals predictions. We don't wanna have any of that here, of course, because we wanna make good money and we don't wanna get suckered in to the delusional price predictions. Number four, action. How do we bank the profits? And lastly, the lessons. Lessons are only for serious long-term financial investors. I know a lot of people just wanna be in here to ride the wave as best they can, jump on a horse, gamble, but at the end of the day, I'm here long term and I hope you are too. Let's dive into number one. As you can tell, this is gonna be a jam packed video. So stick around throughout the video and I will have the timestamps in the description down below that you can reference back to this video because we're gonna to be touching on previous video information as well. Ethereum passing all time high. We're gonna look at CoinGecko, a quick update, Google Trends update, staking exchanges and potentially more institutions buying. All of this putting pressure on the Ethereum price and then of course the bell curve theory. Let's start with the Ethereum price chart and work our way down the list. So Ethereum price, we always look at a monthly chart. This is the macro view. Then in our technical analysis section, we will go into the micro views. But for now, you can see we've touched the top. If we don't have this on a logarithmic scale, you can see it's a massive double top, huge push up. And of course, always have the volume on your charts because that gives you an idea of how much energy is in the market. We're looking at Coinbase because this is one of the most traded exchanges. And I wanna bring up this a little bit later on. This is the monthly bar. Look at the high volume here. Way back here in March 2017, look at the volume on that bar. Very, very similar in the fact that they're very high volume bars on a breakout. Now you can't see it here, but if once I put it on logarithmic, you'll see that this bar was the breakout of that accumulation. And that's what we're starting to see now. We're starting to break out of the all time high on massive volume. Let's have a quick look at the market cap Ethereum. $1,391, which gives us a market cap of nearly 160 billion. That's wild. Bitcoin, 673 billion, and the total market cap is just over 1 trillion. Next up was Google Trend Words. And now we've been tracking this on the channel for some time now. It looks like we're on a trend down, but we have to wait for the week to end. Last week we had a massive top at 100. And basically as Ethereum becomes a more popular search term, this just means that the Google Trends data from previous years will continue to be pushed down. It's all relative to what the top is 
on this chart. There is no figure above 100. If 100 gets stronger, then it pushes the rest of this chart down. So right now we're at 79, waiting for the week to close. Now, quick look at the news. Ethereum 2.0 closes on its 4 billion value locked as stakers commit over 2% of supply. So all of this stuff is starting to put a lot more pressure on the price. What we always talk about on the channel is, is this information already factored in? Because we're always the last to know with the news. Unfortunately, we would love to think, us on YouTube, Twitter, everyone else, we'd love to think that we are bringing the news first, but the charts are what brings us the news first. And then the news commits us and under, makes us understand what's on the chart later. So the charts are always the leading indicator over the news. Finishing off with the fundamentals, we are well aware of the staking that is increasing the price. More Ethereum is coming off exchanges, leading to shortages, getting locked up into staking, and of course the new ETH 2.0 staking, and potentially more institutions buying. Of course, they're coming into Bitcoin, and Ethereum doesn't have any problems with the SEC. It is not going to be listed as a security. Therefore, it is another massive potential for institutions to be buying up. So we have a lot of information and news to tell us that the price of Ethereum could be increasing. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on was the bell curve theory. If you're not familiar with a bell curve, this is what it looks like. Now, I did say in a previous video that we can be seeing a whole lot of these charts come out as prices ramp up and get well into their tops. So take this with a grain of salt. I did hear it recently on another channel and full props to them. I love the channel. The Crypto Sniper, if you guys are a fan of the Crypto Sniper, Mr. Francis Hunt, leave us a comment down below. Fantastic channel, loves to talk a lot about the reset as well that's going on out there, uh, our financial reset, just a little props there. Basically, the bell curve theory, innovators, early adopters, early majority. The theory is that we are somewhere between this early adopters and early majority. Seeing as we saw 2017 have a spike from, for Bitcoin, 200 bucks to 20 grand, it is possible that we see a bigger increase this time around as more money comes into the space if we are in the early majority. Now, I say that as an if because there's no way of telling until after the fact. So it could be possible that we're now in the late majority and the last cycle in 2017 was the early majority. But looking at it overall, just with a little bit of uh, an insight here, join the early adopters, join when they perceive a benefit. So that seemed to be what we were going through in 2016 and 2017. There was just a perceived benefit that cryptocurrency could save the world, uh, improve finance and improve our, the way that we transact with each other around the world, especially with smart contracts and making decentralized governments, etc. Now, it is possible, I'm thinking more probable that we're in the early majority phase now, join when there is a productive gain. So this is a lot of people coming into the market now. The reason why I think we're here and not at this end of the cycle is because the late majority look at this sort of technology when the they join when there is plenty of help and support. You could argue that, that there is plenty of help and support online now. There is plenty of help and support to be able to get access into cryptocurrency of course we're seeing a whole lot of exchanges now there's a whole lot of other ways and avenues to come into the space so maybe we go through this whole phase in this cycle we go from early majority to late majority within the same cycle regardless that is still the most amount of money that would come into the space would be through the early majority and the late majority this is a standard bell curve theory and the rate of adoption early majority, late majority, you've got 68% of the people coming in. Maybe they don't have 68% of the money, but 68% is still coming through this stage. We didn't see 68% of the money come through as the innovators, of course not. We didn't see it with the early adopters, so that's why I'm thinking that it could be this stage. The bell curve theory really swung my thoughts on what we could expect with this next cycle. So I'm gonna keep this on the cards, reflect on it as we go throughout the cycle. But that's another massive reason, in, in my opinion, of why Ethereum could reach massive heights. And I'm really tempted to border on the, the hopium side here and offer price predictions above $20,000, but we just need to continue following the journey and it doesn't matter at this point. So we've looked at all of these fundamental reasons. Let's move on to the forecasting. What happens next? Price increases, sideways price drop. What do we do next? 
and uh, looking at massive gains ahead. So what happens next brings us back to the chart. Now we're going to get into this in technical analysis in more detail. I just wanted to make mention what happens next is I think we go a lot higher. We've broken through this swing top. Now we're yet to close above it, so I'm still waiting on that. We have a day and 21 hours to go for a three day close. On the weekly, we still have about five days to go. So we still need to see what happens there. But on the daily, we are looking stronger than we have because yesterday's bar just closed above the previous swing top. We had a close at 1,368. Now that puts us as one of the highest daily closes on Ethereum record. Ethereum has only closed above this level twice in its history, 13th of January and 14th of January, 1386 and 1365. So once we close above that, I think we are ready to rock and roll. What do we do next? We've been looking at buying Ethereum all through these levels. Like I've repeated that multiple times on the channel. This was part of our early entries, identifying markets before they're ready to take off. And many reasons being which I've covered before. So what do we do now if we're in? We hold on for the ride. We can't be shaken out of our position yet. We have gone through the risk of holding a risky asset as it is through these periods of accumulation, 200, 300, 400 dollars, some even in the hundred dollars. Now is time to reap the rewards. We got to hold on for the ride and note when we think and feel that sentiment is changing, that trends are changing. And right now does not seem like that time in my opinion. And that's obviously what I cover on the channel here. If you did find value, hit the like and the subscribe button, continue following the journey. So that's what I see as happening next. What do we do next? Bull market conditions, hold on for the ride. It's just like climbing on a bull and holding on for that ride. It's going to be shaky. And now is the time to be making the massive gains that we've been waiting for. If you are late to the party, the ride is going to be extra shaky for you. There's no question about it. Sorry to not bring you the hopium, but it's going to be a lot more shakier. But once it starts to take off, which is the good news, as it takes off, it's going to feel less risky. But just make sure you don't let a profit turn into a loss. That's what we're doing next. And that's what we'll continue to follow. Now onto the technical analysis. I've got price targets. Are they still relevant now that we don't have any price data above the current all-time highs? Yes, simple answer is yes. Fibonacci extensions definitely help and of course price psychological levels which we've covered as well. And just to recap them, we're looking at $400 ranges plus previous ranges that we've seen go from the lows of 2016 up to the tops of $1,400 in 2018. So we can claim that about a range of $1,400 may produce some price pressure points moving forward. What I mean by that, if we add $1,400 to the tops, would lead us to around $2,800. Potentially we'll see that as some psychological areas of resistance. So all we're doing is keeping those in mind to give us a brief roadmap moving forward. Some of the, these examples are Bitcoin, we hit 20,000 in 2017, we stopped at 40,000. Of course it was 42, these things tend to overrun a little bit, but it's not much on the scale of things when we look at it in terms of a percentage on top of the massive percentage moves it's already done. Apple, Tesla, all of these are fantastic examples of companies who are running into their all-time highs all the time, plus they continue to find resistance on the way up and these are all supported by Fibonacci extensions. As an example, let's look at Tesla very briefly. Now I have it on a two week chart and we can use the Fibonacci extensions in multiple ways. This way we're just measuring the major range out of the low before it took off onto into its bull market. Now we're just using that range from the low to the high and then we project that moving forward up into territory that it hasn't been for before, which is price discovery. And we can see that Tesla has found resistance at 200%. So essentially adding this range to the top and then seeing if we have a price resistance area. So it did top out at $359, 200% 200 was 352. Then it topped out at 300%, which was $510, and it topped out at 502. Moving forward, 400% saw a minor top, and sometimes it doesn't happen, but this is just a roadmap to give us some idea, especially when there is no other data to look at. Fibonacci levels we know are natural in nature and that's why they occur 
within the markets as well. So that's one way to use them. We'll continue to look at this moving forward with Ethereum, but for the technical analysis, they are definitely price areas that I am keeping in mind as we move up. Two more things that we want to cover when it comes to the technical analysis. We're gonna look at Ethereum versus USD and the history looking back at 2017 to see if we can find some similarities to help us understand what is happening moving forward and the time prediction. We wanna understand some sort of time frame that we could expect this move to run out. Lastly, we'll look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin and the massive move it's been having. The two things on the ETH US dollar chart we'll have a look at is the liftoff month. Now, I'm assuming this is the liftoff month that we're currently experiencing. We have touched the all time high and slightly broken it so far. We still have a couple of weeks to go. Why I am looking at that is based on history. Looking back at March 2017, we can see the liftoff month as it cleanly broke through the old highs also had huge volume and a huge range. This is on a log scale just to get the overall understanding of the size of the moves. Liftoff month looks good, high volume. We're seeing high volume. I think we should probably move higher than this high and close above it. So we've got two weeks, so let's keep up with that. The other thing is the time frames. As you can see here, it's about six months. The low was in December and then the peak was in June. Now we have one month reversal couple of months sideways action and then we took off again. Will we see that again? Yet to be seen because we have already moved up for about 10 months since March 2020. So we're going to have to keep this under control and understand that maybe we will experience a pullback in the coming months, which is what we've been talking about on the channel. However, right now it looks like we should be about to cleanly break through this top. Two weeks to go. That's what we're looking at when it comes to the ETH USD. The time frame, about six months. We've been going up for one, two, three, four months so far. So it's getting close to the end. And from that point, then I would think we should experience some sort of pullback or at least a sideways period to reaccumulate before we take off again. ETH BTC has been going on a tear. We've taken off from these lows that were put in in December and January and we're just taking off, looking to break this old high that was set at around 4%, 4% of the Bitcoin value. So it was 0 0.0405 and the previous top in January 2019, which funnily enough is two months ago as well, was also set at 0 0.0416. So again, 4.1% and 4.5%. All great looking numbers here that we have to break through. But once we do that, it looks like a bit of clean room to move up to around 5.5%. And then our next target's around eight and a half percent. Of course, this is all going to be in relation to the Bitcoin price. So if Bitcoin moves up during this period, then we may see a bit of a halt in the ETH BTC price, unless we find a lot of strength in Ethereum's price itself. And looking at the news, if all of that ETH is being taken off and the supply shortages are coming, then I can't see why this wouldn't continue to push up, which marries the fundamentals to the chart. The chart looks like it's starting to happen. It looks like we're starting to get this push through this old double top. And at the old bottom here that came in, we're looking like a nice cup and handle pattern as a low hit down and then we start to break through. The price targets that I have on the screen here that we can see are using a Fibonacci and we're back up here at five and a half percent. So that marries up quite nicely. And then the 261% also marries up with the old swing top before the, the absolute crash in 2018. So this is all looking really healthy to move forward to around five and a half percent after we break through the 4% and then on to the eight, eight and a half percent from that point. Point four is to take action. Time to bank the profits. How will I bank profits? and also looking at delusional random price targets. These are gonna throw you off, so beware of those. If we start getting diluted with 50,000, 80,000 price targets before it's actually happened, it can set us the precedence that we believe the price should hit 50. What happens if the price only hits 42,000 for ETH? Fantastic, it's huge gains, but that could sell us a hell of a long way short and we miss out on those high gains at 42 and watch the market fall 80%, 90% perhaps, and crash into the $5,000 ETH range all the way from 40. These are just scenarios that we have to understand because we could get diluted from massive price targets. 
Of course, not saying that they can't happen, but just be aware that maybe they might not happen. There's nothing set in stone to say that the price will hit 87,000 or 27,000 or even 50,000. So keep that in mind. How will I bank profits? There are several ways. One way I wanna have a look at is crypto.com. Uh, if you want to link to this, it's in the description down below. Crypto.com, you can sell into USDC, USDT, any other stable coin, Aussie dollars as well, TAUD, Great British Pounds. And then you can stake on this platform for stable coins, which I've just mentioned, up to 12% per annum with that stable coin. So if you're staking $1,000, you're going to get $120 per annum. That's how this works with the platform. Link in the description to crypto.com on your stable coins if you just wanted to hold eth then you're looking at these prices here about two to six percent you can have a flexible account that'll give you two percent on the eth that you're holding up to six and a half percent which sounds pretty great compared to our traditional banking system at the moment which is barely 0.1 percent interest so that's another option pretty good depending on how much cash you have i've talked about this in a previous video which i'll link at the end of this video about supported wallets and the safety of wallets as well so that is a way to bank out profits and i'm sure i will be doing that as well it has worked fantastically to this point i can't see why i wouldn't be using it then now this brings me to the last lesson and that is what do we do moving forward for serious long-term traders and investors did you miss out on this run what do you do next time the main thing I want to make a point to here is don't leave the markets. I'm not saying stay in the market. I'm not suggesting that you buy anything or invest or trade into any other cryptos. All I'm saying is stay with the market to learn the market because that is the only way you're going to understand when the bear market is coming and when the bottoms are coming next time. If you leave when the going is bad, you will miss the bottoms. That's how it happens with every single market. And that's why you probably miss this run at the moment. You've missed it from 100 to 1400 because you didn't stay with the market. Maybe you haven't seen the market before and this is your first time around. If that's the case, definitely stay with the market and you will see the next bottoms play out and you would have been through a, bear, a bull market and a bear market. So you understand the emotions that are coming through investors at that time, which makes you a better investor next time around. So that's the main lesson here, not to get caught up with all of the hopium that's going on, but don't feel like you're gonna miss out long term there are always more cycles to come and always more profits to be made as the old saying goes bull markets can make you money bear markets can make you rich that goes out to ben cohen love his channel all right guys that's it for today's video that's what i think is going to happen with ethereum that's how i'll be playing ethereum at the moment lessons big lessons moving forward into the markets and of course action to be taken if you found value from the video, let me know in the comments down below. What are you doing at this point with Ethereum? Leave us a like, subscribe, hit the bell notification icon as it helps the channel out a lot through the YouTube algorithm. Lastly, if you want to be part of the course that's coming out, my course, leave your email address on my website. Link in the description, leave your email address there and there'll be a huge discount for the first 100 guys who sign up. That's it for today's video for Ethereum. Come back, reference this video. There's a lot of lessons in that. It's very detailed, quite long, I understand that. But I hope to give you as much value as possible through these videos in order to make sure that we are learning along the way and increasing our portfolio holdings. All right, guys, until next time, remember to have more fun to get more done. Peace out.